Hey what's up everybody, I'm Trophynet the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwentage. In this show we talk about specific Gwent cards or interesting decks to play around with. Skellige is back baby. One of my favorite factions was hit most by the damage nerfs from a month ago, but the last patch actually made a few interesting changes to the faction which made it viable again. Today's deck is led by one of my favorite OG Gwent leaders, Harold the Cripple. The Chipping Wood deck focuses on dealing as much spread out damage as possible while having enough tools available to counter the most frequently used decks of the current meta. The crux of this deck are therefore the Uncrate Greatswords and Dagur Two Blades. The Greatswords boost themselves by one every time an enemy unit on the opposite row is damaged and Dagur does the same but only works when he's on the melee row. Dagur however counts every enemy that gets damaged instead of just the ones on the opposite row. Both these units basically double any damage tick you dish out, so try to have at least one of them present on the board at all times to stay on top of your opponent. That's the base, but this wouldn't be a Skellige deck without some solid removal options. To complement Dagger and the Great Swords, we focus on small amounts of damage that trigger multiple times on one or more targets. The Uncrate Marauder and Dimmon Warship both deal one damage three times, the former on random enemy targets and the latter on a singular target. The Dimmon Light Longship can damage an enemy by one each turn while damaging itself at the same time and the Uncrate Longship damages each enemy played by one automatically. Udalric can damage a unit by one on order with three charges but gains zeal when two enemies were already damaged. Delirium deals 1 damage to a random enemy on a specific row 6 times and Sigvault deals either 1 damage on order each turn or 2 damage if he's damaged himself. Remember, all this damage is doubled or tripled points wise depending on the greatswords and dagger on the board. I usually put my greatswords on the range row since I can use Geralt Art to push units to that row. Geralt damages 3 units by 2 and pushes them to the ranged row if they weren't already. The damage only procs after they are pushed back however, so your great swords there will be boosted as well. Last but not least we have Sandstorm. This special card damages the units at the end of a row by 3 each and almost became an auto include in the latest patch. Since then, certain units such as the Fire Scorpion were nerfed to 3 power instead of 4. Since most affected units were popular to use with Portal, you can now immediately counter it with Sandstorm, destroying both spawned units in one go. There's one more removal card in this deck, but I'm gonna keep him for last as a little bit of a tease. The next aspect of this deck that was also included in the latest patch is a buff to Alchemy. A few cards received the Alchemy tag, mainly Freya's Blessing, Restore and Sigurd Rifa's Rite. Freya's Blessing allows you to play a Bronze Skellige unit from your graveyard, also triggering the deploy abilities of said unit again in the process. Sigurd Rifa's Rite allows you to do the same with golden cards, but summons rather than plays the revived unit. This allows you to replay Sigvald, Dagu, or our next subject, Jutta Andimen. Jutta has a whopping 12 power, but if she's the highest unit on the field when played, she damages herself by half her power. Great Swords can easily surpass 12 power, however, to circumvent this, or you can benefit from the damage by using Restore. Restore was recently changed and also got the Alchemy tag. Instead of just healing, this card also boosts the targeted unit by the amount it was healed. With Jutta, this immediately gives you 12 points, more if she was damaged even further. If Jutta is in the graveyard, you can even use Sigdriva's right to pull her back at full strength, since her deploy ability isn't triggered, making for an awesome 12 point finisher with minimal setup required. Gremist also changed a bit. His Purify ability is now recharged every time you play an Alchemy card, allowing you to clear multiple locks or bleed statuses. This is great against Nilfgaard and of course the new Vampire Bleeding archetypes, giving you an easy counter for at least one round. Don't underestimate the power of Purify. But talking about finishers, this deck excels at dealing the final blow. Harold's leading ability deals 8 damage spread out across random targets one at a time. With one greatsword and dagger on the field, this can net you up to 24 points with removal. If your opponent stacked a lot of units on one row, you can finish even stronger with the brand new Hamdal. Originally, Hamdal boosted himself by the same amount that any of your warrior units could dish out in damage. A very powerful unit we used in full in the warrior spirit deck from a while back, but because all those points went into the same unit, he was a prime target for a scorch or a reset making him a very risky play nonetheless. Right now, however, he turned into a better grade oak. 
The new Ham doll damages a random enemy unit on a row by one and repeats this for every unit on that row. Basically a weaker lacerate you might think, but his measly original 4 power has been buffed to 8 for 12 provisions. This allows you to put down your dogger earlier so he benefits from both Harold, which should be triggered in the same turn to protect your dogger, and then Hamdal in your final turn. It provides you with a secondary finisher in case dogger is destroyed as well. The final card I want to talk about is the Hengate Sword, probably the most tactical card in this deck. It deals 2 damage, but if you manage to kill something with that 2 damage, you can play a base copy of the destroyed unit on your side of the field. It's perfect to turn a Geralt or Yennefer card back at your opponent, or even play a high power card if you can whittle it down enough. This card has a lot of potential, since it basically allows you to steal cards from your opponent. Almost every match provides a new opportunity to use this underused artifact, so give it a try for yourself. Gameplay wise, you should use your bronze damage dealers and ships in the first round in combination with a greatsword to keep the pressure high. Jutta can always be used directly or with Restore to push your point advantage in the first round even further. Try to always take the first round so you have the advantage in the third round. That final round is where the big hitters come in. Dagur, Harold and Hamdal should be your final plays so you limit your opponent's counter possibilities. This should give you the advantage over most Francesca decks, but Ardal is also really prevalent lately. Ardal requires some extra baiting since he has a lot of removal with joust and assassination cards. The long ships are ideal as bait in this case. Ardal is often really greedy with his removal, trying to take out obvious threats, so playing a long ship is like waving a red flag. Reviving them a few times baits out most of these and might even tempt him to waste his leader ability early. When most of his tools are gone, you can toss the first round and take the final two with your much stronger direct damage combos. Gremist can even take care of any late round locks if needed. Skellige seems to trump the mighty Nilfgaardian Empire in this current patch, at least in my opinion. And that's it for today, I hope you enjoyed this episode on the Chipping Wood deck and the changes to Skellige. Got any other ideas on how to improve this deck or awesome plays in Gwent? Don't hesitate to leave advice in the comment section down below so we can help each other out. That's what we're here for, after all. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. Check me out on Twitter at, at @trophynut. that's T-R-O-V-N-U-T, if you want to talk. And if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Any support is really appreciated. Thanks enormously for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye!